This video is sponsored by Factor. Any drone or helicopter pilot is well aware of the ground effects phenomenon that rotary wing aircraft encounter. As they come in for a landing and the aircraft nears the ground, it requires less and less throttle to stay aloft. This is because flying low to the ground is more efficient than flying high up. To the pilot, this kind of feels like the copter is landing on top of a big squishy balloon before it actually touches the ground. In the last few years, I've done a lot of experimenting with ground effect vehicles, and they are always in one form or another basically just a fixed wing airplane that flies low. In this video, I'm going to try and apply the ground effect to a rotary wing aircraft, which is not something you see very often. Could this end up being the future of transportation? Let's do some experimenting and find out. In my previous video, I took one of my best performing ground effect vehicle designs and made it one step closer to a quadcopter by adding these four lifter motors on top of the wing. Their job was to provide additional lift by blowing air down underneath the wing and that would in turn allow the aircraft to fly more slowly, a bit more like a hovercraft and less like an airplane. This ended up not working very well, I think primarily because the lifter motors were contributing to forward thrust too much and not enough to vertical lift, so it ended up not really being all that much slower than my other ground effect vehicles. This only became an issue when I tried to chase it on the electric surfboard and could barely keep up. It was really cool to see it flying up close, but it would have been cooler if it were flying a little bit slower. That could have been achieved by making it a little bit more of a quadcopter and a little bit less of an airplane. In this video, I'm going all the way to the other side of the spectrum and try to get a pure quadcopter to harness the ground effect in a practical way. The first thing we need is obviously a quadcopter. Now, we could just use any old quadcopter, but the problem here is that the rotors aren't usually that close to the ground. This is lost opportunity for a stronger ground effect, since moving the rotors even lower will increase the aircraft's efficiency in hover. My quadcopter is going to be optimized for the ground effect, so there's going to be no landing gear and I'm going to put the motors on the underside of the arms so that the props are as close to the ground as possible. I designed this quadcopter frame in Onshape. This frame is not ground effect specific and can be used for any standard quadcopter type uses. If anyone wants the design files, they're available in the video description. Since this design is native to Onshape, you can go in and adjust all the dimensions to suit your needs. Onshape is free for hobbyists, so click on the link in the description to sign up. Then you can copy the quadcopter frame workspace and have your own version to mess with. I then cut it out of carbon fiber plate on my CNC router and used a vise to press in a bunch of M3 PEM nuts. These are made for sheet metal but can also be used for composites. They're pretty convenient, they just push in place and stay there. After those were all in, I added some screws and some aluminum 25mm tube clamps and sandwiched it all together with the other frame plate. Carbon tubes were cut to size on the miter saw and the arms were attached. This whole thing was going to need to be very waterproof, so I coated the ESCs in epoxy for protection. To try and keep the flight controller dry, I'm using a Tupper... I'm not allowed to say the T word anymore. They sent me a cease and desist after I made that video about my autonomous T word boat. That video is now called Autonomous Box Boat. Anyways, I mounted all the electronics in the generic storage container and attached a battery mounting plate on top of that. Time for a test flight. I started off running this thing on a two cell LiPo for reasons I'll explain later. And with such low voltage, the motor response wasn't strong enough to stabilize it very well. So then I went up to a three cell and that didn't work very well at first either. But eventually, after some tuning, I got it hovering well enough and the ground effect was definitely quite noticeable. So with that, it's time to start doing some science. According to the aerospace textbooks, the ground effect typically becomes noticeable at an altitude approximately equal to half the aircraft's wingspan. This means that if we want our quadcopter to feel the ground effect at higher altitudes, we'll need a longer wingspan. But it doesn't have wings! We have propellers, so longer propellers should do the trick. These big 30-inch multirotor propellers were given to me, and for the last year they've just been hanging on my wall as a decoration. This project seems like a great opportunity to put them to use. The only problem is, these motors are designed to spin an 18-inch propeller, not a 30-inch propeller. To get around this, my plan was to run them at super low voltage. This is why I had initially tried a 2-cell LiPo, which is around 8 volts. Usually these motors are run on a 6-cell LiPo, which is 24 volts. Reducing the voltage will reduce the speed of the motor, and hopefully this will allow me to use the 30-inch propeller without burning them out. So will it even fly with such big props? Let's find out. Jesus. So yes, it does fly, but not well. After some PID tuning, it did fly well enough to maintain a hover. Apart from the terrible high-frequency PWM whine that you hear, this thing was super quiet. The props themselves are so quiet that they are barely audible over the PWM noise. 
Someday I'd like to try this thing out with some Falk drives so that there is no PWM noise. Then I bet it would sound amazing. <laughs> so, back to the science. The question I had was, do the bigger props lead to a larger efficiency gain from flying in the ground effect than smaller props? To find out, I logged the current draw with both sets of propellers in a hover, and I did this both in the ground effect and out of the ground effect. It would have been better to look at power instead of current, since the power draw accounts for changes in voltage, but RD Pilot doesn't display that in the logs, so I just made sure the batteries were full for each test. Here's what the data looks like for the small props, and the big props. If we take the averages for each hover, we can see that out of the ground effect, the big props require much more current just to stay aloft, about 22% more. In ground effect, the big props were still worse, but by quite a bit less. In this case, they only required 2.3 extra amps to maintain hover. That's only 15% worse. So this goes to show that while the big props were all around worse, they did do a better job at feeling the ground effect than the smaller props. So that's cool to see. Now generally, bigger props are always going to be much more efficient than smaller props, assuming the motor specifications are optimized for each. But our bigger props were not more efficient. So why is that? I think it's because of something called magnetic saturation. Generally, as you pass more and more current through a motor, the magnetic field it produces gets stronger and stronger. This leads to more mechanical torque. However, if you pass too much current through the motor, the iron or steel in the stator core saturates, and the current is no longer proportional to the torque. At this point, most of the additional current you put in just turns to heat, and the motor becomes really inefficient. I think that's what was happening here with my motors and the big props. Even though they aren't making very much power, they are still drawing too much current to be operating efficiently. The big props may be less efficient, but they are cool, so let's try them out over water. I CNC cut some foam donuts that the aircraft would hopefully float on as landing gear. This ended up sorta working, but ultimately they didn't have enough buoyancy. It was pretty cool being able to hover with the props just an inch or two above the surface. Every now and then a prop would strike the water and slow down, but as a whole the aircraft was pretty resistant to this. It would usually just keep flying. It was pretty amazing at how slow these props could spin and still keep the aircraft airborne. This was extra apparent near the surface due to how strong the ground effect was with this thing. That said, I was kind of hoping that the ground effect would be even stronger when the props were practically skimming the surface, kind of like a force field that would prevent them from ever touching the water. This didn't end up being the case. I didn't really notice the ground effect getting all that much stronger between like ground level and two inches high. Oh no, I lost a donut. I think right next to the water, the props just kind of start swirling the air around in circles rather than pushing it down. So I was a bit let down there. I was impressed at how little pilot inputs were required for the aircraft to stay at the perfect altitude. It would just kind of sit there on its own since the ground effect is a negative feedback loop or in other words, a self-stabilizing system. I tried some forward flight and it worked all right, but as you can imagine, it's a big problem when the blades touch the water. When I would drop the throttle to land, the blades would just kind of skip over the surface and eventually come to a stop. Without the floaties on the props, it was not able to get up off the water. The motors just didn't have quite enough torque. So that's enough of that. There exists a thing called a skirtless hovercraft that uses the underside of its body to help hold a high pressure bubble of air underneath. I decided to take this principle and apply it to my ground effect quadcopter. So I traced out the prop locations on a big sheet of foam and cut them out. The foam was pretty floppy without reinforcement, so I added these little sidewalls to help stiffen it. The skirt definitely did seem to make it start floating at lower throttle levels, so that's good. Out on the water, it worked pretty well. The foam skirt seems to help stabilize the altitude quite a bit. In slow forward flight, it worked decently well too, but as you can imagine, touching the water would really slow it down and throw it off balance. In a hover, when it would touch the water, it seemed to get suctioned down a bit. Not sure what that was all about. The weirdest thing I noticed was that this thing seemed to have a soft ceiling at around one and a half feet high. It could fly higher, but it would take significantly more throttle to break through this ceiling. Then once it was above it, the throttle could be reduced a bit. Really odd. Next I decided to add a thruster motor and a rudder so that it could build up some more horizontal airspeed without having to tilt forward like a drone normally does. Now for a quick word about the sponsor of this video, Factor. When I'm busy experimenting with obscure aircraft concepts, the last thing I want to do is have to go to the grocery store and cook. Of course, I could just stock up on frozen meals, but those are low quality and I wanna make sure I'm eating well. Thankfully, there's Factor. Factor's fresh, never frozen meals are ready in just two minutes. So all you have to do is heat and enjoy. Then get back to your experiments. Not only are these meals easy, but they're also delicious. Factor offers over 34 chef prepared options and I haven't found a single one that I didn't enjoy. This jalapeno lime cheddar chicken was so good and all I had to do was pull it out of the fridge. This loaded bacon shredded chicken was also amazing. 
Mmm, that's good. Just think of the productivity gains. Here's their spicy poblano beef bowl, also a real winner. And best of all, I didn't even have to leave home to get it. Here's my absolute favorite of them all, the pesto salmon. The fact that a juicy salmon filet can just show up at your door like this is amazing. I mean, come on, just look at it. You know that looks delicious. And trust me, it is. Head to factor75.com mm. or click on the link below and use code RCTestFlight50 to get 50% off your first factor box. The thruster motor definitely helped it accelerate faster, which is all fine and good until you get going too fast and it goes aerodynamically unstable and starts acting like a bucking bronco. This is probably because the CG is in the middle, like a drone, not at 20 or 30% back from the leading edge, like an airplane. So this thing is not going to be able to glide like an airplane at all. In fact, the aerodynamic forces are actively trying to flip it over, and the quadcopter flight controller has to work extra hard to keep it upright. Oh no! Today I put a little DJI FPV unit on there, and I also have a 360 camera. So we're going to go do some FPV exploration. It's a foggy morning today. This is actually working <laughs> really well. Let's do a turn here. Doesn't turn well though. I'm now going backwards. <laughs> oh geez, okay. Whoa, oh no, I just bit it. I pop up off the ground and air motor's on. Am I moving? <laughs> it's kind of hard to tell. It's a tricky thing to pilot with FPV. Let's go see the puffins. So I have the RD pilot flight controller in uh, angle mode right now. So it's trying to stabilize its angle. It's not just a rate controller like uh, most people fly beta flight or FPV in. Whoa, he's getting a little wonky. Oh, I didn't mean to scare them. I just can't really stop. <laughs> Sorry, puffins. I'll leave. I apologize. Let's go check out this boat over here. Damn, that's a nice yacht. Like I said, though, I can't really stop. So <laughs> it's or it's difficult to stop. So I got to. Uh, Try not to get too close. Whoa! Oh no, it bit it again. So I can't get going too fast because that does not work. I'm just gonna go slow so that I have a higher chance of not flipping this thing over. There's the Mont Lake cut in all its glory. So I want full throttle with the thruster motor to get it moving and I'm gonna back it off. Hi, Puffins. Oh no, it's getting wonky. Oh, okay, less thruster motor. There we go. Now we're moving. Sort of in the right direction. Barely. <laughs> this thing is just like a uh, air hockey puck. Before I had taken the big props off and built all the foam around it, I filmed it with the Freefly Wave camera to see the props spinning slowly, but in slow motion. After playing back the footage, I noticed how suddenly all the vibrations were visible. If you look closely, you can see the battery wire is shaking. The entire battery itself is shaking on top of the cantilevered battery tray. The booms are also shaking quite a lot. It's pretty cool to see everything vibrating that you can't see with your bare eyes. In addition to this, Freefly has a software feature called Amplify that finds what's vibrating and increases the movement of just those pixels so that the vibrations are even more visible. Here's the processed footage. Look at that thing jiggle. It's jiggling like a jello drone. My money don't jiggle jiggle, it folds. I like to see you wiggle wiggle, for sure. It makes me want to dribble dribble, you know. As you can imagine, the Amplify software would be super useful for studying vibration if you're doing design and development stuff. And at the least, it's just super fun to play with. So, back to the main idea here. Are ground effect multirotors going to be the next big thing for transportation? Mm, nope, definitely not. Sure, they're more efficient at hovering low to the ground, but what's the point at hovering low to the ground? There is none. For any practical transportation application, you want to go fast. And for that, you want a fixed wing ground effect aircraft instead of a rotary wing one. Traditional hovercrafts have their place, and they're probably even more efficient than ground effect multirotors would be, since the skirt really optimizes the air cushion that they're floating on. And yet, they still aren't very prevalent today. A normal airplane or helicopter is pretty tough to beat. This has been a fun concept to play around with though, and it was cool to see just how much more efficient a propeller can get when it's up against a surface. So that's all for this video. Thanks for watching. Bye.